Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint this gorgeous scene of a girl in a blue dress in a fall landscape. I'm going to show you the techniques to create the trees, how to draw and paint her in. I'm going to show you how to create distant landscape. We're going to work on our dry brushing, our transparent fabric and folds. So much is going to be covered. If you need any of our resources to help you succeed in the goal of this painting, there is a link in the description on YouTube. And if you go to the website and find this video page, you will find and locate a traceable. Just in case you're not ready to draw it in, you'll also be able to locate a grid and on the pages instructions on how to use the grid if you prefer to do that. So we've got that for you to help me bring all this to you is my husband, John. Hello. He makes sure that all of our robotics cameras are sort of pointing at whatever I'm doing or talking about. There will be doing, there will be talking, there will be laughing, and there will be painting. All of those things are going to happen today. And you are going to get a painting that surprises you out of this experience. So if you're painting along for the first time, I really want to welcome you. Please jump in the chat. Don't be a stranger. Say hi to everybody. Tell them where you're from. When you show up regularly, everybody kind of gets to know each other and you'll be family before you know it. If you're coming back, I want to thank you for your support. Really appreciate you showing up to these classes. It helps us keep getting to teach you art for free, which is like my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. You ready to get into the materials? Sure. Let's do that. All right. Let's see here. Okay. So we're going to start out today with a 9 by 12 canvas. And if you have chalk or watercolor pencil, it can be helpful to divide the canvas in half by length. So that would be at the 6 inch mark, a vertical line and a horizontal line at the four and a half inch mark. Again, if you have chalk or a watercolor pencil. I've also made a little mark here at just about six and a quarter inches, and that's gonna help me know where my distant sort of landscape is. So if I were to kind of create a little loose line here, is this a that step? would let me know. No, okay, this is sure. where I want them to be when they start. Okay, just want, I want sure. them to. I just want you guys to kind of think about this. As I'm going over the materials and talking about things, if you can be thinking about doing that, that is a good idea. It's a good idea to start with a little mapping on your canvas on projects because it will help you not get lost in the orientation. If you're using the traceable, this isn't really something that you need to worry about. And if you're using the grid, you automatically did it, so don't. But this is if you're just drawing in and sketching in loosely with me. Hmm. I'm going to be starting today's painting with these acrylic colors, titanium white, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, and Mars black. Now, I'm not going to be getting all my colors out that I'll be using in this painting yet because I don't want them to dry out or get used up during the process. I probably, for the transparent fabric, will be using some acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is so many, there's packages, look, they called it gloss glazing liquid. They've changed the name a couple of times. It's made by Golden. And the words you're looking for, slow drying extender for acrylic colors. What that means in acrylic terms is, slows the paint from drying so fast on you and makes the paint go longer and more transparent. That's what those two things do. Not every product does that. Um, some things are named almost the exact same thing, but they're very different in nature. So if you're looking for something to help you get better glazes, this is your friend. If you're looking to slow down the drying time of your paint a little bit, this can also be your friend. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna be doing kind of some skin tones and everything today. It's gonna be a fun day. Okay, sir, you may step us. All right. Step one. To begin this painting, I'm going to want to put in sort of a ground for my distant, far away landscape. The sky and the land, it's muted and light and far away in the distance. And then as it comes forward, it kind of gets a little bit darker. So that's an interesting opportunity for an ombre. From the top of the canvas to about the six and a quarter inch mark, I'm going to be using very light colors. And then from here down, they're going to get much darker because that's where the trees are, where the shade is, where we're going to see a little more drama. To do this, I'm going to get a brush. This is called a cutter. Where is, what did I do with my water cup? I'm so weird. Mm -hmm. I know I have one here. It's hidden behind Blue something. Blue one right I'm there sure. in front of you. Just right in front of your hand. Where? Oh, that's you, that's a drinking, drinking water. Cup. That's not oh. paint water. I need uh, paint water. I didn't know that. You said, where's drinking my water cup? Water cup. <laughs> drinking water, not drinking water. So you can use any large brush you have. Like another brush I might choose in this is this is a Raphael number 20 bright. I just want something that will let me cover a bit of canvas in short order, okay? So that's what I'm looking for. You look around on your table, see what you have. What's a bigger brush that might help you paint a larger area? I'm going to get that brush a little bit wet on the edges here. I'm going to drag off the extra water. I don't want to carry a bunch over. 
and I'm going to begin to load white on to my brush. I wanted to know this question too. Mm. Why is this called Girl in a Blue Dress 2? Because there's Girl in a Blue Dress 1 who was awesome. <laughs> she was super popular. She was doing another thing. She's in a slightly different dress. She's blonde. She's going through a different set of woods, but they're very matchy matchy. So mm. since we've sort of done this before in a different way, different position, different sort Different story, kind of same same fairy tale. So, so what you're saying is your originality aim ends at naming the paintings? Oh, no, I don't name the paintings. My patrons name the paintings. So how my paintings actually get named, you'll notice that I'm dipping in the white and kind of loading up my brush. And I'm going to come through here and paint everything with a wet coat of white. My patrons name my paintings. That's how the paintings get named. I put the finished paintings in the patron group. On Facebook, they name them whatever is the most popular. We put on the mini book with a name credit for the patrons. So that's how my paintings get named because I name my paintings keyword searches. <laughs> so, I name my paintings what you might be searching for if you were looking for the painting again. Because let's admit it, if you were looking for this painting, like girl, blue dress, art, Sherpa fall, that's what you would Google. Mm. So that's what she's named. <laughs> so you can see I've come down a little bit past my six and a quarter inch and everything is wet. It's not soaking it's not sopping, and this is important if you're painting on a board because that could cause it to have that little bend in it, can it? And I'm going to get just a smidge of my phthalo blue, a very staining color, and come across my canvas, and I want a light, light blue. This is almost, even as it is, too dark. Ooh. This is a very distant, far away background, and I want it to be light, very light. Almost white, but not quite. Right? Almost white, but not quite. And I'm making sure it's just sort of this very light, distant background. Light. Coming forward, right? I'm going to rinse out a little bit, though. The ground gets a little bit darker, doesn't it? It has a little light spot, and then it gets a bit darker and more gray. So I'm going to take a little bit of my Mars Black and my Burnt Sienna. And you can see I'm loading again, but I'm using a lot less paint. Are you noticing that? So my, my load is less. I'm not pre-adding white to the surface. I'm going back and forth again. Okay if it's streaky because this is the underpainting and I will very carefully kind of blend these two together. If I'm having any difficulty, go ahead and get some white and just make sure that there's a soft transition between those spaces. That's all you're trying for. Now a little trick that I can do, make sure you rinse out your hog brushes thoroughly whenever you use them, that's an important thing. I'm going to squeeze and tuck that out. You can take any dry brush that you have, right? Anyone that's dry and clean and soft. I'll use, a, I'll use this one here. This is a Royal and Lang Nickel Mop. Mm. And I can come over this with this soft brush. And I can very carefully, like look, using little kind of blendy circular strokes, look at the blend I can create happening here. This is pretty subtle transition-y, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't use hog, uh, I mean a hog, uh, goat. Some people use goat. And the reason I don't choose to use goat, nothing wrong with it, if you have it under control, I find for new artists it's very difficult to control goat hair. It gets really wet and getting the moisture out of it so it will do the soft dusting can be really hard. Goats are not known for their wrangle ability. <laughs> they tend to go. do what they want to do. So you can see that we've got now kind of that smoky little ombre, don't we? What a fun thing we've created for ourselves. Being a Capricorn, I if know my people. If you're wondering, would a makeup brush do this? Yeah, yeah. You could probably get one at five below. Just make sure you rinse it out. It's not leaving any little hairs on the painting. I'm going to rinse this out, and I'm going to dry it out rigorously with my towel. Rigorously. Rigorously. Invigoratingly. I don't beat the devil out of it. I invigorate my brush. Mm. Not that there's anything wrong. Enthusiastically, I'm enthusiastically drying my brush, but you can see once it's not, once it's wet, it's a little bit clumpy. We're gonna call that a step. I'm Ooh. gonna dry it, and John's gonna look for any questions that you guys okay. might no, have. Right, if question. you have a question, please put it in caps. We won't think you're lying to us, uh, yelling at us, <laughs> lying to us. We won't think you're yelling at us. And if my moderators don't have a link already with your answer, well, you might get your I, question asked. I, I, on I the got show. questions. So you do the dry dry thing. See, they got the, she's got the drying thing. I got your questions. So I got them lined up. I see you guys in here. So thank you for joining us. Love seeing you guys. We are having a good day today painting along with you guys. This is going to be pretty fun, I think.
I like this girl design. Now, if you need help with the traceable or the reference materials or any of that stuff, check in the link in the description down below. We bury all those links below that more info line. There's a couple above it, but most of them are below it. So check that out. Uh, don't forget to hit the, the like, comment, subscribe, human faces button. Sharing, comment, yay. Yay. Okay, questions for the Sherpa. Okay. Um, how do I keep, man, everybody's asking the same question. How do I keep my brush from shedding all over the place? Pre-wash. Vigorously. Vigorously. A Vigorously. vigorous pre-washing. You, you just scrub and scrub and scrub, okay. and then you pull it out. Now, if after a pre-wash, like you wash it in the sink, and you really pull out those loose bristles or hairs, if it's continuing to shed, there may be an issue with how the brush was bound or is glued in, and you may need to talk to the manufacturer. Now, this is a step now, yeah? Yes, we're at okay, a step. So here's a step. A picture. And did you have another question? Oh, uh, let's see here. Oh, yes. Can we do something like this in watercolor? Yes. Yes. And actually, we're doing a lot. If you like, if you like these girls and you like these stories, um, I have a bunch of them I'm working on in the line and wash and watercolor. Uh, if you like my watercolor classes, go over to the watercolor channel and hit subscribe because I've got a girl and a bear coming up. Now, this is a very exciting subject for me, a girl and a bear in a fall scene. It's just, it's just too much. I've got a cowgirl coming up who loves her horse and has flowers, and I've got an Eiffel Tower uh, lover's kiss. So I've got some cool line and wash coming up. Uh, this Wednesday, we've got a castle line and wash. So we're going to learn how line and wash can help us do architectural things, and it's easier than you think. So it's really fun. Go ahead and follow that. It's a good channel. If you're on Facebook, you don't have to go anywhere. It all happens here. If you're on YouTube, we do have two separate channels. I got a drop in it. See that right there? It's not going to hurt my final painting. I don't have to worry about it. But what happened, and I want to talk to you about, is called underbinding. That is where, because the, the uh, paint wasn't able to dry and bond to the surface, it lifted back up. If you're getting that on your canvas, that's what's happening to you. The fix is to dry everything thoroughly and just paint over again, especially at this stage. You'll be okay. Hmm. Right. Now, I'm going to use my... Uh, little t-square again because I know that I'm at about six and a quarter right to get her in and she is just a little bit before the six mark so I realize I've got to keep that there and I'm just going to use my ruler to think about how are things placed on my surface sometimes just looking at the placement of objects can help you orient what you want to do I'm gonna grab one of my weird new cheap brushes that we've all been having a blast with. And these are a little shetty, <laughs> um, but if you wash them vigorously, they stop. I got a giant package of these for $3. And here's another one I've been using. This is the small one, $3. <laughs> so this is the 5 8 inch and this is the 3 8 inch. I found these in the uh, furniture chalk art section of Michael's. And I just thought, are those a good hog? And they're, I wouldn't call them a good hog, but I would say that uh, they are, I would say like, I enjoy this hog. This is a Paris Classics by Raphael. I enjoy my Silverstone hog, you know. So I've got hogs I like that I would say are good hogs, but they're a get by hog until I can convince you to upgrade your brush, hmm. which I will. Okay. So now we have to start putting in this background and I want stuff to be very soft and blended uh, as we mentioned. And so we're going to do that not by working wet into wet, we're actually going to do that by mixing values and creating light colors. And so one of the first things that I'm going to want to do is to create a very light orange. I'm going to take my yellow over here, kind of away from everything, and a smidge, just a smidge of the cad red at first. Uh, you know, these are powerful colors. They're very staining. I'm using an artist knife so that I can create a little bit of a mix away from the main stage, right? And mm. see how this is just a little uh, yellow, a little orange. If I go and smidge is this amount, look how small that is. That's a smidge, scotch, a little bit. Just a little. And you can see that the palette paper does hold up to the artist knife quite well. There we go. Now on top of that, this is quite light, so it's okay that it's near my white. I'm going to get, look, oh, mm, I'll use this bigger brush and see if it works for me. I get this lightly wet. This is what I mean by lightly wet. And you notice how the water is kind of coming off creamy and white. I'm going to put this aside to be changed out. And I'm going to get clean water over here. You have several? 
Huh? You got several over there? Yeah, I'm super good. Okay. Um, I'm going to load up just a little bit of the yellow onto my brush. Can you see that? And then I'm going to get into my white. That's quite light, isn't it? Mm. A little bit, just kind of right there. And I, oh, boy, it needs to be lighter. It's so crazy how it'll look so light on your palette, and then you'll get it to the canvas, and you're like, that's not quite light. See how we're just coming over here? We're going to mm. come across the top. We're not quite at the halfway point. We're a few inches over. And we're going to come up, and we're going to tap up and down, not making patterns. Don't make patterns. Don't go tap and move and tap and move and tap and move because you'll create a rhythm or a pattern and that will make your tree go away. Right now, chaos is your friend. Hmm. Chaos. Be, be an agent of chaos in your painting right now. There we go. And we can bring this kind of around. Just sort of speaking to, you know, maybe some stuff is happening here, but we want it to be very light. These are distant landscape elements, aren't they? Yeah. They're distant. I'm going to come here again, light, light, light. And there is maybe a little bit that's happening up here. And that was pretty light. And I'm being an agent of chaos. I can wipe off on my paper towel. And you'll notice I have washed this out vigorously. It isn't shedding on me. I can come in then and maybe get a little of my brown into this mix and make a little bit of a light brown. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. That's a nice little other distant little space, isn't it? Something's happening, but it's far away. And so I don't have to be detailed about it. I'm just trying to say that objects exist far away from what we see. I'm going to rinse out. Because I got the brush thoroughly wet, I'm going to involve my towel. Squeeze all that extra moisture out and squeeze it tightly. You don't want the brush to carry a lot of water. Hog brushes. And then I also like to look for a loose hair that wants to escape before it gets into my painting. And you can always do that by kind of going like this. And you can pre-loosen them if any of them have worked their way out. Hmm. Little, little weird moments that you, you kind of pick up on as an artist. Now I'm going to take my artist knife over here and I'm going to get another smidge. If you don't have an artist knife, you can do this with your brush. This just conserves paint a little bit. I'm going to add just a little more, a little more red into it. See how it's a little brighter? A little oranger. Just a bit. Just some. It's okay if I come and get a little brown and maybe down here. It could have a little bit of brown in it, couldn't it? We go slowly. We won't overmix or miss our off ramp on the color. We won't miss our off ramp on the color. We want to get just to the right exit. And so sometimes slowing down and paying observational attention can help you do that. Notice that there's a little bit of difference between these two. So it's going to give us a little dimensionality in our foliage. We've got a bit more orange in this tree back here. It can have some white into it. It won't be quite as bright as everything in front of it, but. Agent of chaos. Hmm. The trick is to not want, just resist your urge to make a pattern. Believe it or not, your brain just wants you to make a pattern so bad you have no idea. It says if you put it in a V, it'll be great. Whoops. That was almost a moment for me. But it wasn't. You can put a little bit here, kind of coming through. A little bit coming through. Nope. A smidge. I might get a little smidge into this. Look at that. Ooh. If paint does underbind, it's, is it, will it ruin the painting? No, you just have to allow it to dry and bind thoroughly, and then you come back and paint it once it's fully dry, right over it. I would just, so if I, if I did the first layer, if it's my first layer, I would just repaint the first layer. If I was far into the painting, I would just repaint the small part that got underbound mm. after I let everything dry, though. Let it dry. Let it dry, let it settle, let it think what it's doing. Watch for hairs that escape the brush. That's the difference between a good brush. I haven't had to offload a hair on this Raphael Paris Classic since my first offload. Um, on this one, it's a pretty regular occurrence. Hmm. But it was $3, so I'm not that mad at it. And I can remember, oh, yeah, where is this, where is this going to go? It's going to be at about, I can take this bush down. To just about six and a quarter. See how we're doing? 
about the six and a quarter mark. And it can come through here, even though I know I'm going to be putting trees and things. It's all right that there's foliage. I can get a little of my brown involved and a little of my black involved. I still want it to be quite light, though. Don't want it to get dark on me yet. It's almost too dark. So there's the there's the rub. The rub. If I need to, I'll come in and get a little white into that. This kind of speaks to some under foliage that's going on, doesn't it? These are far away little bushes. Don't want to be fighting little hairs. You're going to have to invest in a better brush. That's what you paid for is the guy to tie the brush correctly. <laughs> what you're paying for is the guy that knows how to tie the brush correctly. <laughs> There's like one guy, he lives in Germany, and he ties the brush correctly. I'm going to go ahead and get into my blue. I'm going to take my color up here into my white and blue. And I'm going to make sure that I just kind of missed some of this area. See how I'm misting it up? Mm-hmm. Distant, it's far, it's a little bit misty. I haven't even had to get glaze into it. It's just we understand that's what it is. So they're they're very light, and I can even come in and get more white into that. More, more, more. So this just value-wise almost disappears into that light blue sky. This will let her have enough contrast to really pop. You can always come and add a little more pop here, just a bit into that bush. I thank will you rinse for all out. The, all the stars. And thank you, guys. Thank you for the stars. The stars really help us. There is a 20 inch disco ball now mounted to the ceiling, and it turns slowly and it has light and it rotates. And it's at the 1 PR, one, one mile RPM rotation, which is the good. Oh, one. yeah. I'm going to take this. We're not in a new step. We're still in the same step. I'm going to okay. take a number four round brush. This is in the Art Sherpa line. You can find these at Michael's online. You can find these at Jerry's and uh, Dick Blick, I believe. And uh, on the brush guys, sometimes you can find them in store. I think King's Framing and Art has them maybe in Canada. I'm going to load up with some white and my brown and black. And I'm going to make a very, very light. It's light color, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And if we think of the canvas, and I'm just going to show you with the ruler as being six way, six inches, we're going to be just a little over from the halfway point. Just trying to help you guys orient objects. Because sometimes when you're painting, you'll be so busy painting, it'll be hard for you to orient your objects. And from here, we're going to get a very light trunk. So light at first. And I'm going to brush up. It's thicker on the bottom, thicker at the top. It's going to get darker in the middle. And that's sort of fun for it and us. And then as we come up, we can even get into a little bit of our our orange color, isn't that interesting? Creating these little shadings within this distant tree. Pushing it back. Oh, you're so far away. <laughs> and I know you're far away because the stuff around you is super, you know, light and blended. Oh. Hmm. Do I need to use, uh, do I need to prep canvas paper before I use it? Yes. I would highly recommend prepping your canvas paper before you use it. And here's why. It's super thirsty. Oh, Patty Hoffman. She says we're Sherpa. Woo! We, we haven't been Sherpa in a minute. Sherpa oh my gosh, in we are. a minute. Um, I, you know what? Who? I could I could turn disco on, but disco does not see you. Maybe. I think it's not bright enough to it, get it. I don't it know how it would get past enough, the thing. Yeah. I can't. It's, it, what it is, guys, is that I bought a light, a, and it takes a very particular kind of light. Such and, good news. Yeah, so the the first light I bought was like, all right, I don't know if I need a light that's stronger, so I bought a $50 light. I was like, okay, that doesn't work. And then the next one's up, 
a $200 light. And then after that, it's like a $1,000 light. So I hope that the next one up works because this one did not. Look and at they... those two little trees, John. We are Sherpa. Our Jeez. trees are good. Man, we got greatness going on here, don't we? I'm going to get my smaller little brush here just real quick and get it very lightly damp. I'll get into my orange color. And let's just put a little bit of a little branch here. Right? Sometimes they would have it. And maybe some bush goes over this up. This up. Just to, just to give it some depth. Very lightly. See how I'm just very light and random? Mm-hmm. Be random. Be random. I can even come and get a little white on here. And add a little white to the top of the branch. Just to say that it got a little personality. That looks pretty good. Let's call that a step. Again, these are called in, and, and I think you can find a version. This is like a house brand that anybody, Joanne's, Michael's Hobby Lobby, anybody can buy these house brand brushes and then they can put their names on them. So that you're just looking for the very cheap hog round in the furniture painting store. Never undermine, like, I have to tell you that the furniture painting, chalk painting crew, they are very demanding on their materials. They want them. They want them so much. Uh, oh, uh, Irene's like, can you finish the thought on prepping the canvas paper, please? You've got to prep it. You need to seal it or it's going to absorb all of the uh, paint and water and everything that you're putting on there. I personally just, you notice that underpainting that I did, that first layer, I would just do that three times to make sure the paper was sealed. Some people want to put gesso on it, though I find gesso can be equally thirsty. Some people do a gloss medium and varnish and then a gesso and then paint. But you do need to prep your paper. There's a really gorgeous prep with modeling paste that I really love, but it's a little complicated in advance. I would say at least understand you need three coats of acrylic paint on the minimum to seal your paper enough for it to paint like it's a canvas. Uh, how do I clean, reuse, and uh, old canvases posted on Facebook? Um, just so, if you want to. You can just paint over them if they're acrylic. You can just paint a new painting over it. Take a good picture. Keep it in your album, and you can do a new painting over it just so if you want a white surface, a clean surface to start with. Again, just two coats of gesso, and you're good. Not a good hmm. I was going to say, it's not a good idea to just pick up random canvases and try to coat them because you I could think, have I oil. I think she asked or... on Facebook, but there wasn't an answer. Oh, yeah, you know, but you like, don't go to like a thrift store and just buy a bunch of canvases and then come home and gesso them because they could be oil, they could be mixed media. Yeah. You know, now, Irene's asking about her paper buckling, which is a different problem. Buckle. You also need to tape your paper down. So not only do you need to prep your paper, this is like in a journal. If your paper is also buckling, you need to tape it down so it, flat, it, it stretches as it dries. Can you eat my coffee, darling? Yes. All right. I can. I'm going to bring I? a little bit of kind of foliage forward, a little bit of thought forward. I know I have chalk brushes that I just bought, but I don't know where to put them. So I'm going to just talk about where I feel this hill might be. So the hill, you know, might be starting, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches down. It's almost starting seven inches down, just a little bit above it. And that's pretty far up, right? If we're talking about this little hill, I'm going to do a little... There we go. I'm making from just a, like at the six and three quarters inch mark, I'm making a little hill mark. And then if you imagine that the halfway point of the surface is about here, right? We've got to kind of sketch out. Let's sketch out a little bit of our, of our rock. Comes out just a bit. Starts here, comes out a little past the halfway point. And here's a little trick. We're going to, I'm going to just using brown and black, the toe of my brush. I'm wandering down at an angle. I'm going to push out a little bit and bring this back to create that ledge. See how we created a little ledge? That's going to create our ledge. And that's going to be that ingoing thing. Then the hill coming down here, 
is what's going to create our path of light here. So we're going to have bushes and trees here, a little bit of light here, and this is more uh, path. It kind of comes from about the inch mark up. And we'll say that the shadows and everything on her stone kind of go through there. So that's the slab that she's on, the kind of lift that she's on. This will be in shadow. This will be in light. That's how you might get that in. And that's just important to know where that is. If you guys can see that. Do we want to get a picture of that? So you guys get this part. I'm going to get a photograph of this and call this a micro step, a mini step. We're going to step it, but only because I want you guys to realize and be able to reference quickly how you got those lines in because those lines anchor everything else that you're doing today. And if you can get those in roughly correctly, um, you're going to get a painting. I'm feeling kind of chuffed today because I freehanded the traceable and, um, you know, just, I had a little picture up when I was freehanding. I was just working on my drawing skills and I put the photograph up underneath it. And I mean, I was like, like John was like, whoa, he was so impressed. He high fived me. So I'm feeling a little chuffed today. Maybe should not have said that. <laughs> no, it was good. Jinx it. No. <laughs> All right. So we have this area in here that we're going to want to put some light in, don't we? We want to put some nice light into it. And we want to kind of create a little blending from this space over here and then the beginnings of some forestry here and the beginnings of some forestry here. A little bit of work that we have to do. I'm going to go ahead and grab a half inch angle brush. I know a lot of you guys, if you paint with my mom, that's Ginger Cook Live. Um, you might be painting with these already. They are a brush that's great to have in your brush bucket. And yet, be sure if you're on Facebook to vote for your favorite bird for the next bird hop. The, the, the cactus bird is just falling behind mm. the spotted bird at the end. And the car, like, who's voting for the blue jay? I don't know, man. It's just back and forth between those three. So you got to vote for your favorite. All right. So we're going to come through here and we're going to create some very blended stuff. Now, I actually like the blue color that I mixed up here where the orange kind of came up into my blue and made a little grayed out thing. And so I'm going to bring this here because it looks very light, doesn't it? And we need this to be very light. Now I'm gonna just paint in these values. I'm brushing and brushing down and that crisscrossing action is giving me some nice, not, I don't have really like a directional stroke that I'm concerned about. If I get a little of my yellow in here, I'm gonna put that in. That's kind of like a little pop of sunlight, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe I'll come over here with a little bit of this white and yellow, create a little bit of popping of sunlight. Show how bright the day is. Fall days can be bright. Mm -hmm. Don't you guys agree? Fall days can be so super bright. And I'm just going around my palette and weaving in some values and some colors into that spot. I just want to make sure that it's light. Where I have that, I'm going to definitely take a little of my white over to my brown. And I'm going to gently kind of brush and blend in what is a more diffused plant line. I'm going to do that just lightly. I can come in and get a little of my yellow. I can make these little line and rough marks. Notice that some of them are crisscross, but we're just blending those values in. If I'm concerned about getting a good blend in, what I can do is I can put a little bit of my gloss medium in varnish mm. because it's an extender, right? It doesn't just slow dry. Whoops. It's an extender. And the extender part of this is very important. Let me get my, my references all having a little moment. Um, and so I can come in with just a little bit of that clear glaze and look at the other way I can blend this background up into the plant life that's here. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That's a very diffused, subtle tactic, and it has a great kind of look. I can get my brown and black together again and kind of mute it with some white and make sure that this ground back here is maybe rough. Back and forth with my brush. Notice I'm being random and back and forth with my brush, kind of implying that loose little ground right there. I know I've spent a lot of thought on this loose little ground. No, it's... But it's, it's far away and it's diffused. I'm going to come in with my little hog brush and just kind of make sure that things are a little not in focus. That's what I'm doing. I'm taking the focus out because they're far away. 
That's what I'm doing. Taking the focus out. I go down and I go across, and that kind of diffuses that focus. And I want a diffused focus. You want a diffused focus. I'm going to get a little bit of my uh, red over here. And I'll make a brighter orange, guys. This one's going to be a little bit brighter now. That's much brighter. But it's closer to here, and I've got to get between these two, these kind of three little values, to get this, this little run of bushes that are maybe coming here and backing everything up. So I'm going to come here, and this is sort of like, these are almost behind the hill. This is how I'm going to anchor this. This is that smaller three eight three quarter inch brush. I'll make sure that I've got you can just you can find these on Michaels online, but again, I'm sure this is a house brand. I would be surprised if you couldn't find them in the brush section of five below. Because huh. they are just a just a house brand. I can bring my brown into this and notice that it's very muting of the mix. And I let the brush kind of find, find, let the brush find the work. Let the brush do it. I know I've got a tree and everything to put in here, so I'm going to come up between these bushes and the sky and just add a little right now while hmm. it's here. Just a little bit. Yeah, just to make sure that everything is, got some values, right? Come over here. We're going to come over to this side. Let's just make sure that we've got, You know, really push that brush in there, right? Mm -hmm. It makes the brush do all kinds of crazy things. And you want those moments. Because they imply that something is happening. I might add a little light. See how I'm getting the light color and maybe even a little white? Yeah. To a couple spots on this bush. Because it would have a little light, and that's exciting to add. Not the little bush that it is. I'm going to kind of get some white into here. And I'm going to push up and add some kind of light muted little grass that could be in this space. Hmm. Now it's going to get darker from coming forward, right? And we might as well kind of put that balance in. So let's get a little of our black and brown. And I'm going to make some kind of back and forth. I'll go, definitely go over that, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to need to be painted over. And I might want to give that a good paint. Just so it, it was vanishing. Mm -hmm. There we go. Needs to vanish. So I'm going to make sure it vanishes. Now I'll push this brush up and kind of around and it creates sense of gosh like maybe things have fallen yeah old stuff has fallen back and forth roughness just roughness i kind of just rush the see how the brush has got this weird little the hairs kind of go out this is what it is when you're being an artist you're like oh that's a convenient moment for me Yes, you do that work right there. You give me little weird dry grasses. Look at those wonderful weird dry grasses. And then you think to yourself, could I have some weird dry grasses over here? Yeah, I probably could. Let's go for that. Who doesn't want some weird dry grasses? Pushing it forward. I keep cheap brushes and I keep expensive brushes because they all have a purpose, don't they? They yeah. all have a meaning and a reason and a and a point of going on. All right, let's call this a step. Uh, if my coffee is warm, I'll uh, drink it. It is. So I really enjoy um, painting landscapes. I'm very much enjoying painting fall landscapes as of late. Um, not because, guys, I recognize that it's summer and summer's not over. It's not over till September 22nd. Um, but I'm kind of over some of the things going on. So I just thought I'd move the year along. <laughs> move it along. I'm like, I need some fall oh. color enjoying my life. Now, 
if you followed what happened with this painting, my shoulder kind of went out and I had to reschedule it uh, a couple of times. And because of that, I'm going to do a special girl in a red dress for you guys. Um, I hope preemptively saying that works out well for me, <laughs> but I'm going to do that. And um, it'll be a recorded one that I drop in the future just to say thank you for being patient with her. And that'll be like a lower hoot than this one. This will be like in a one and a half, two hoot range. So that, that if you like this, and you're like, whoa, this is a lot. There's a beautiful painting for you to do. And I want to say thank you to Marlene and all the star senders out there. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Very much thank you. I'm going to take my little angle brush here. And I'll go ahead and I'm going to put out some ultramarine at this stage. I will definitely also add some phthalo green to my palette. Mm -hmm. Just somewhere I'll find a spot, add some phthalo green to the palette. There we go. More than I needed, but it's fine. These are going to help me get some colors that I need. One of my favorite grays is ultramarine and burnt sienna. It's just a terrific gray, and I'm going to mix them kind of one to one. Okay. You can see it gets me nice color there. And I'm going to make sure that I shade the front of my stone a bit. See what I'm doing? I'm yeah. shading the front of my stone. I might also add a little brushed back and forth shadow. And coming back. Just working the stone in now. Notice that I'm being really rough and trying to randomize my brush strokes. I don't want to pull my eye to any particular line or brush stroke. I can add a little bit of white. I might get some glazing medium into it just so everything kind of blends and flows out well. Mm. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of blend. It is still in shadow for sure. More than anything else, but it's in a little more light. Rhonda would like to ask a question about your paint preferences. Okay, I would be happy. I'm always happy to tell you my paint preferences. So you're using a lot more Sennelier than Golden. Uh, yes. I am using a lot more Sennelier than Golden lately. So Golden hasn't done anything. There's nothing wrong with Golden. Golden is still a two paint. Great paint. A couple of things have happened. Um, we got in quarantine and I don't leave the house that much. And so it's about sometimes what I can ship in easily. Uh, the people over at Savoy Fair who um, are... Uh, were friends of ours, uh, sent us a bunch of paint. So that really definitely helped. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we bought a bunch for the event. <laughs> and we bought a bunch for the events. So so, we, so I have an abundance of Sen LEA paint in right now, but nothing. I'm not mad at Golden. I'm not mad at Holbein. Uh, Artist Loft Level 3 is still good. You'll see it come in and out because I have a lot of Artist Loft Level 3 because we bought it for events. So it, sometimes if we buy a bunch of paint for an event and I've got to use it up, I'll get into it. We're not yet driving Maybex, so, you know, we're going to take all the free paint we can get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't take, okay, I get offered free paint from companies I don't like yeah, all the time, paint. and you've never seen them on the show. No. I've oh, been good. offered, in, uh, like, tremendous even amounts of money to tell you that I like paint that I don't like, and it's never been on the show. No, but it's, it's a lot of the companies send us supplies that really help us just mm -hmm. be able to do what we do. And we always tell you when we get those. Like, I think, so this is a mix of paint we've purchased. And, and a mix of paint given. we've been gifted. So, you know. It's a mix. I'm adding a little white and yellow to the front of the stone, which you can see gives it a little bit of light. And we're going to just keep kind of creating some value here. Sometime I can get a little more blue into it, and that can be kind of nice because it creates a definite cooling. And I'm being very rough with my brush. Notice it's not a hog brush, it's not anything, but it is definitely, I'm definitely being rough with the brush. So on my website, I have a blog of all the acrylic paints that I have found that are available anywhere because sometimes you guys don't even know who makes acrylic paint. And I haven't tried all of them. So some of them are not in my favorites list because I just have not tried them. Um, so they may well be in it. But all the ones that I have tested that I thought were just good paints that I would recommend to students or uh, anyone, 
are in that list of marked or marked as such. Hmm. But again, sometimes something is not on my list because I haven't tried it. So you can't be like, oh, she just hates that paint. I don't necessarily hate that paint. What my goal is here is to create the stone having it be rough, right? I want it to be rough. I'm going to take advantage of this as well. And I'm going to make some dark color with my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. Tap it out on my paper towel. I'm going to just rough up my stone with some dark marks. Yep, yeah, that roughs that up. Not making plants this time. I'm just making rough stone marks. Uh huh. I'm roughing up the stone. I'm just using the mess of this brush to do the work for me. Mm. And it can, it can do that work for me. And get into my white here, make a very light color. She's gonna block a lot of this. So it's really not that critical for me at this moment, at this juncture. Yeah. Give that maybe there a rough edge, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. So she's got a little light at the front of the stone. And then there is a little light. Let me see if I can get it to come across here. There's a little bit of, just a little bit of scattering of light back here. I don't want to miss that. And then we're going to get into some of my favorite. Let's take our brush with some burnt sienna over to our thalo green. That's a nice dark green, isn't it? Yeah. More brown can be like just a little green. By the way, if you have not rented the green night, <laughs> don't. And if you love the book, extra don't. Because I, I saw so many people going, don't judge it, buy this movie, it's the book. Something happened in the movie where they messed up on the lighting for all the millions of dollars. Nobody thought to buy a light bulb. Mm. There are literally 10 minute stretches that are completely in the dark. <laughs> it is, however, funny as I'll get out to read the Amazon Prime reviews of the movie. And I don't, I think they must have paid some people to give it some five stars uh -huh. just to get their ratings up. But wow. I'm like, I, I, my rate, I put a review, I was like, worst audio book build as a movie that I've <laughs> ever had to not watch. Some of it, there would be like a scene, there's a memorable bit for me where it was like dark, 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 scuffling noises, some muffled oofing, going on about 10 minutes, I'm asking every member of the family, can you see, we're just tapping out the green here, we're just pushing up the green, 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 green. Can you see, can you see, can you see, and they all confirm that they cannot see at the end of it. A skull is put on a bed. I have no idea why. Mm. I'll never know. I'm going to buy the book now just to know what the heck I happened in the movie. Was that their plan? Did they just make a completely dimmed out movie so that I would have to buy the book? I don't know. I'm going to keep tapping up green. I, you know, there's great stuff that I watch. Like, I'm really liking Nine Perfect Strangers right now on Hulu. Enjoying that so much so far. But and I and I loved uh, Fort Salem Motherland. I just got my mom turned on to that. She's loving it. She's like, she found out John Little had watched it all without her and never told her about it. She's like, what? And he's like, I didn't think you'd like it. And she's like, I love it. I will tell you when I like something, right? But no, on that one, that one's a no for me. Notice that we're just giving that little pop of green there. We're just putting that in just lightly, lightly. Now come into this gold right here, and I'm and it's okay that there's some like little orange in it it's going to make kind of a very dimmed green and we're going to add some highlights to our green that are not bright see how they're not a bright green because we yeah. wouldn't want a bright green here that is not what we want it is fall everything is a little dried out she's the flower in the painting okay i think we're almost getting there i'm going to maybe grab a little of this and 
And while you're talking about that, can you t- touch on getting over artist block? Artist block happens for a number of reasons. So the first thing you have to determine is why did your artist block happen? Is it heartbreak? Did something tremendously pow- powerfully and meaningfully sad happen to you and you just don't have the heart to create right now? Because you really need to respect that that space, that mourning space, however heartbreak, whether it's the loss of a relationship or someone has passed or the loss of a beloved companion, just, it's a big deal. And if you're not able to create in that space, don't force it. That's not, you honor and respect that sometimes we need to be sad and Mm. we need to pause and stop and the world needs to stop for us. So if that's why it is, you know, pay attention to why it is, make sure if you need extra assistance or help medically or uh, with mental health care, I know I, I get it when I need it, um, that you're getting that. And the painting will come back. The block is not forever. You just need to heal from the wound. Sometimes we're physically unable to paint, right? The pain is too great and we can't get past it and mm-hmm. art isn't managing it. You need to talk to your doctor. You need to manage it. It will come back when you can manage the pain. Um, but sometimes we're just a little stuck. And for that, we need to power through and just create and get through the bad paintings, get through the weird creative moments. And you'll find your rhythm again if you don't stop. And it's just so important to know, am I in a eh, funk and I just need to push through and, you know, just keep creating and find my rhythm again? Or am I in a moment where I honestly have to pause and take a second to recognize that something profound has happened in my life and it needs to be honored Mm. and seen as what it is? Because sometimes stuff is... It's big. I'm adding a little yellow to my brow. It's big, and you need to recognize that it's big. You know, don't just ignore your own pain. I think in the West, uh, sometimes we're a little afraid of suffering. We really are. Yeah. We avoid it profoundly, and, and sometimes it's necessary. I'm not looking forward to any of the moments of that in my life when they have come, uh, them ever coming again, but I can tell you, uh, and you can definitely check anything I say to you with a mental health care professional. <laughs> but um, I can tell you it's important to mourn loss yeah. when you have to mourn loss. You know, um, another movie, Midsummer. I watched it with my oldest teen daughter who's into horror movies right now. I'm not saying, I'm saying, you know, make sure you have a support. Maybe not um, weird morning with you called support like we saw in midsummer but like some supportive thing maybe not like crying with you in that way but definitely some support (laughs) all right i'm going to dry this and then we're going to go on to the next step okay and don't forget when you're you're uh drying your surface don't use the heat make sure you keep it on the lowest setting because that can cause the paint to get soft and the surface to be soft and you want it to be nice and dry and resilient and not underbind so you just want to make sure you thoroughly dry it between those layers. Don't use heat and you'll be just fine. Um, don't forget, check in the link in the description down below. And she's back. So I will hit this button. And, and, and I need to add on to the caveat about if you're, if you're going through grief. Some people do paint through grief. And if it's helpful to you, do it. I'm just saying don't force it. Um, listen to your spirit, listen to your heart, um, pay attention to what you need. If you have to go outside and scream, whatever you have to do, it's your right. It's sacred. And the people around you, if they can, if you have the strength to be there to support someone who's in grieving, you know, uh, try to allow them to, to grieve how they need to. And again, this is within the healthy co- constraints of healthy grief, because there is a healthy grief. And obviously it can become serious and talk to somebody if you feel like you are being swept away in it and you can't manage it on any level, then you definitely should reach out Uh, and paint. If you feel like you can paint, Uh, I know some of you have painted when I definitely would have been completely halted, completely halted. And I think that that's okay. If that's what's bolstering to you. Mm. Okay. So let's get on to, did you photograph it? I did. Okay. Now we're going to put in our girl. Are you guys excited about that? And we're going to talk a little bit about her scale and placement in the painting. So she's a little bit back from this tree here, right? She's a little bit back from this tree. I'm going to try to pick a color so we can see her. I'll do blue. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. And she starts at about two inches down from the top. 
And she ends, believe it or not, about an inch from the bottom. And that's important for you to understand her scale and placement because as we paint other things, we don't really need to just paint, uh, you know, all the things, everything, all the time. I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna to start, believe it or not. I'm going to put a lot of her in with burnt sienna or just plain blue where you're doing an underpainting of her. So... I'm going to come in and say her head is about, I'm going to use my ruler to help me stay in scale. Her head will be about an inch. About an inch. In that space. So I'm giving myself about an inch to think about. She's a very interesting um, kind of thing going on where her face is jutting out. I may move to a smaller brush just so I have more control Yeah. Um, over some of it. I know I can change it and fix it, but I just want to have some control in the middle. This is a detail brush. And I'm going to just initially show that her face is going to come here. And we got the hair, and there is a movement of hair coming down. Now, I have my background sky color. Interestingly enough, if I need to erase or create details, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring a nose down. Let me get into my little sky range, right? Because I can. If you're not at a place where you're like, oh, I'm ready to do this, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to, right? So I do need her nose to be out a little bit, and we know that her hair is covering a good portion of what is her uh, forehead. There is this really interesting bit with the shoulder where it comes forward here, and our neck comes down. And that's just big in the line of her. I really like that part where the shoulder tucked in. But the neck came down. Mm hmm You know, and then if you arc a line across the back, you know then where the other shoulder is. Right? Because the shoulders are jointed across. So it helps us line it up. We know it doesn't where it's not higher and where it's not lower. Because it's like that. Then we know that coming down um, really to the five inch mark, right about here, well. Yeah, about, about right there. And come down into that. That's the low hip, right? That's the low hip. I need to pull this arm back. I know I've got a nice bust to pull out just a little bit. A little bit of a bust. You can do this. I'm bringing that down. And her foot's going to end here. And the dress is going to blow back. In that way. Sometimes I might have to get a little of my paint. Now again, I'm sketching with paint. And you may want to use chalk. So if there's anything you don't like, you can proper change your mind. I'm going to get a little blue for this next part. So my hips now, my waist is really here at four inches. So at the top of her head is two inches down. The waist is going to be four inches. Heads are six to eight heads high. People are six to eight heads high of length. If you're doing a model or a very long exaggerated figure, you add a couple heads. You know, six, five, six, if you're trying to make a very realistic human. And so it's just, you kind of measure that out. Though some people do have very long uh, positioning. And then so from there, I understand that her dress, right? And I'll just very lightly sketch this because I want the room to blow her out. I will just pull the dress down a little. I'm going to go inside the confines of where I think the dress will actually take up space because I want to be able to do a very light paint here when it's time. So now I know kind of where she's going to take up space. 
I also know some things about the positioning of, uh, like I know her elbow coming back here mm -hmm. has to be about at her waist. So if I'm trying to capture a little of her, and I always have my erasing. When I erase in paint, I erase in the background color. Uh-huh. Okay, that's how you erase, in the background color. Good to know, isn't it? How do I erase when I'm freehand and when I'm riffing on a canvas? How do I erase? You sort of background touch color. It up there. Yeah. yeah, I just always keep my background, and that's why sometimes having a good, easy to redo background mm -hmm. is a, a benefit to you, like the light sky. Why we paid attention to that. Back into this, so I'm going to put a mark there. I know that that's an elbow, and I know right here is an elbow. Right, which means if this comes here. I know her arm is going to have to come forward a bit, and then the hand is going to come back. And then I know for her, this is an interesting, it's almost straight back, same length, and then the hand is like that. That lets me bring in the back, swooped in, and I won't have to worry about the shoulder because her hair is going to be in this space. And that's really all I need to know right now to get through this. And now what do I know? I know what I have to put where. Because she's my focus. And so if I kind of work her in, I'm not going to put branches over where she's standing or put objects in as I get excitedly painting my tree, right? You're going to be a little careful painting the framing foliage and tree over here. So this is that sketch. If you're doing the traceable, this is when you would put her in. You could use serial paper. You can use the grid method. You could use a chalk rubbing on the back. Any of those are acceptable, but I've been asked to show more drawing and freehanding, and so that's what I'm doing. So if you guys want to learn that with me, and I did this in paint. I'm pretty chuffed with that too. All right, we'll call this a step, and we'll come back and add some more trees. Okay. Give us a little relax from our figure drawing. So. The reason is really great to be able to um, uh, mix paint, right? One of the reasons you really want to be able to mix colors is ever you have to erase something you did in painting, one of the easiest ways to do it is uh, to do it in um, the background color that it's in. All right, I'm going to catch up to her. Uh, Christy Riley would like to know from YouTube, how do I transfer an image onto canvas? There are a variety of methods. There's something called projection. That's where you actually project the image on canvas and just trace what you see there. And there's obscuras and all kinds of things. If you search projection or obscura for artists online, you're going to find those methods. There's digital apps that do it for you now. Um, there is using a transfer tracing method. That is explained on my website, written out with the traceable. Talks about the serial paper, talks about the graphite rubbing, gives you some images. Uh, another way to do it is the gridding method. Um, uh, the artist, Chuck Close, now kind of a controversial artist, but one of the great artists of our generation just passed and he created a whole new gridding method to do hyper-realistic photos. And really it's just about you break an object into little gridded squares and then you just put what you see in that square and when it's all done, you have a very close and accurate rendering to what it is. So any of these are absolutely doable. And yeah, we want light pressure on the top of the rock. That's a good question. Okay, I am back to me, and you guys are back to you. Are you ready to continue on? I think so. Let's put in some, I think I'm going to put in my tree trunks and then put in some more leaves. I want to have my trees kind of in there. So the tree is interesting. We're back into the burnt sienna and black, and I'm going to start with that. And I'm going to come about here, and I'm going to give myself... Oh gosh, a trunk to start, and he's got a little trunk friend. I just want to remember that there's two, and I'm going to bring my trunk friend in first. Black and brown, right? We'll come with other colors, but we're going to start here. Number four round, this one is going to come really up off the canvas. Going to wander it kind of forward. You know, I might get a little green into my mix here and kind of at the top, maybe, because that'll hide it. It's really weird. We're doing weird colors, but it's fun.
his little fringe trunk is going to start here, bend out, and then come back. Oh, twisty, twisty, tricky little friend are you. Yeah. You know, so we have these two structures that are really defining and holding up the trees. There is also right here a thin little sprucling that comes all the way up to the top. We need all these because they explain where all the leaves come from. So I'm just making a nice thin little fellow and I'll bring that down. He's going to be a little more in um, the oranges and stuff here. He's going to be a little more in the background, but I got to get him in first. I'm going to take a little orange into that uh, dark mix and mm -hmm. begin to shade this just somewhat. See how we've kind of orange that trunk a bit? Yeah. And we want to do that because the light is on it. The trunk isn't all black or all brown or all anything. It is a mix of things, even here. We want to make sure that we see those things. And I might come into the red. Red is pretty powerful. And I'm going to paint red down here at the bottom of the trunk. It's a little wet, and that's to my benefit. I'm not sorry about it. I'm not mad at it. Okay, so now we have some tonality to these trunks. Sure, they're in the bushes. That's absolutely true. They're in the bushes, but we, you know, we want to be able to see that. I'm going to take a little of my white, and I'm going to get some of my gold into it. And I'll go ahead and pop some bright reflections on a point or two. Just showing that light hit something. I've also got a lot of very dark branches, right? That they're going to be peeking through some trees. So let's bring those in from off sides. These are darker. I like to bring them through. And I know I'm covering a lot of them with uh, leaves and we'll be putting some of them back after we're all done, but it's just important that we have some depth. Back into that just crazy brush we've been enjoying this whole time. And I'm going to put some brighter kind of orange brown. And through these trees too. So see how I've just used some foliage to put them in the in the ground. I've I've anchored them in their fall ground, haven't I? Maybe a little of that and some white and just Oh, such good foliage with these just messed up brushes. You gotta love it. Difficult this next part because it's not how you normally think of fall colors. It's maybe not what you normally work yourself into. So I'm going to take a little of my brown and green, right? Even more brown. There's a hint of green to it, right? Looking pretty cool. It's gonna be nice. We'll bring this here. We are allowing some of the blue sky to kind of peek through. We're kind of thinking about some of that. Some of these might be more brown. It's all right to get a little green into your orange. Right, because what we're doing is we're muting as much as we can this sort of like green color into that orange and yellow. Difficult mix. Maybe a little yeah, we had red and a little bit of our previous orange. 
colors look very muted on the palette and are spectacularly um, vibrant on the canvas. Now we can kind of still see some of our trunks and some of our stuff. We've got sort of these diffused little leaves and everything happening there. I may come in and show a couple of these leaves with my detail brush. Notice that I'm finishing the trees. I've got the green into that gold here. And that's because sometimes we have dense foliage and sometimes we see the edges of leaves of things. We don't have to just rely on a fan brush technique to get us through. We have other methods. We have other brushes, other ways to find our tree. And you'll find that there are times when layering a technique together, like a hog brush and stippling, and then also adding some individual leaves, can give you a tree that you're really excited about. Right. I can always go into these two, but because there's green on my brush, it stays very muted. Maybe there's some dark foliage here that comes through and layers in through the trees. We like that. I go to my palette often and I pick different colors. I go here into the orange and I get maybe get some more red and I do want my trees to show through, but it's the beginning, right? We're starting to see it, not just one. A little bit of the yellow. I'm over here into where that green is, but I'm excited about what I've got. Maybe a little darker here, just to show that there's some bushes and sometimes I'll grab black if I'm having trouble with the value and just deepen it up. You know, and I can sketch in paint just like I can sketch in a pencil. Got how I'm sort of sketching in the paint. Talking about little leaves and bits. You can come in with some dark color, sketch that in some. I don't mind adding little kind of crazy leaves that go off and out. Yeah. That's okay with me. And I can come back and be like, mm, I need this to be just a little more. I'm going to grab some red. I'm going to grab some yellow. Mix of leaves. I like it. No, you can ask me. I'm just adding some brown to this. Do you give critiques? I don't do critiques. Um, I will sometimes give advice when I see paintings in the group if there's something that um, I can let you know that you could do to uh, make things better. Um, I used to give critiques just to help. I could help people prep for their college uh, entrance with their portfolio. Um, my mom does in her group have a critique club, but I don't know if it still has open spots. Um, and what I'll tell you about critique is that generally, as a beginner, I'm getting a very dark color here. Generally, as a beginner, you already know what you did wrong. You have a pretty good idea. Um, or you know that it isn't working. And so I don't really, even when I do advice, 
focus too much on what you did wrong because what you didn't see and what you have the most trouble seeing is what you did right. Right. That's what you guys never know. And on and sometimes critiques are too early. There is a whole stage of your art where honestly, you just need to do another painting. You don't you don't need a critique, you don't need criticism, and critiques should never be mean. They should never hurt your feelings. Um they should be actionable. I'll tell you one rule about a critique is a critique should always be actionable. The advice somebody gives you in a critique should be something that you can do something about. Somebody says to you, I just don't like it. That's not a critique. That's just criticism and it's pointless in art. Ah. If, if you say to somebody, I'm not sure where the sky isn't working and they say to you, well, you've got this and this right, but if you added a little light near the hills and you warmed the hills a little bit with some oranges and yellows, and pulled some blue up top. See, that's advice. That's a critique. They've told you in their artist opinion what you could do as another artist to get to your goal. Just telling you your painting isn't good isn't a critique. It's criticism and it's stupid and I don't like it. So. How do I feel about that? What do you, what do you think there? I don't know. Got some thoughts on it? Well, not, not the person asking the question, but I see this sometimes in other art groups that are not my art group where somebody will say, what, they, what, they, what they're asking is, what they're actually asking is, they'll say, uh, They'll say CC welcome, that's cr constructive criticism welcome. And then the group will come in there and give advice that they can't use, that they can't do anything about, that's super subjective, right? Whether they find the art good or bad, what they feel about the art, which is just, you know, and there's like maybe one person who comes in and is like, oh, I think if you use this different medium, you would get the result you're talking about. Right. That's the person you listen to. And also, you're not supposed to give advice on stuff that they don't ask you about, which is why I don't recommend with new students that they ask for an open criticism like that because you don't know what to do with that. That makes sense. Yeah, I have a lot of feelings on it. I am defining some of my trunk so that it shows in the background. I'm doing the same here, and I'm going to add some twigs and things. I just want some forest to make some sense here, so I just want this to... Be a little bit interesting, shall we say. A little bit fascinating. And I definitely want a little more yellow into that green color. So I'm going to come in. And I know I've got some right here. I'm going to get smidge, smidge, smidge. Because again, it's the end of the year. So there would be a lot of the color would be desaturated out of the tree. Even my mom and I, when we ask each other's advice, we don't do it in an open-ended way. We do not. And it, in my mom's group, just so you know, there's a rule, and I have it in my group, I do not give constructive criticism on any of my mom's paintings, and she doesn't do it on any of mine. So if they're my design and you did it, we're going to send you back to your teacher. Mm. Whoever it was you learned the lesson from, you go back there. I like that. That's working quite well. I am getting kind of happy with what's here. I may um, kind of really get the moisture out of this and try to get some colors here on the ground just because generally what's up in a tree exists down low. There we go. Some dark green going. Always fun to do. Oops, there we go. Oops. Just adding a little was, light down there. Okay. Yeah, I, just get over here. I was paying attention to, to chat. And I didn't okay, get all right. Down there so that's where we are. I probably need to change water again. Take a step. And take a step and have a coffee heat and fresh water to me soon. I've got another cup right now, but just in the next few steps. All right, don't want to just spill that. So really, we're going to come over and do the other side, which is quite light. And then we'll begin doing the girl, who is going to be actually more fun than you think. Um, as long as you get her in place fairly well, 
you can paint her in with paint and catch her highlights and catch her low lights. And that's why I was like not a thousand percent sure on what the final color scheme would be. Like would I use my full palette or would I use just a very limited palette because she had some weird colors on her and some weird lighting. And I wanted the opportunity to use any color in my box just in case I needed it. But I think I'm, this really has turned into kind of a limited palette painting. So I feel like that's kind of working well at the moment. And I, I like these weird textures and things that are around her. And I think she's going to uh, end up being quite lovely. Don't you? Okay, so let's come over here. It's very similar to what was going on over there, but on the other side. So let's get into, say, a brown green that we had going on. It's a little watery, so I'm going to really dry my brush out again and see if I can get it reset to where I want it to be, which is not so wet. More brown than green. I kind of want to balance that out a bit, and that's always interesting to me. I'm going to grab a little of my orange, my red, and mix it in there. And you'll notice right away that green and red make a brown, which is true. Green and red do make a brown. I have a whole video on how to mix brown, and that's one of the main core colors. So we're going to just make sure we've got some little brown going here. Thank you. And I may get a little yellow and more red into that brown mixture that I have. I'm kind of adding some highlights to these little branches that come out. As you do. Right? As you do. Just a little bit. It's not too bad. And I might get more into my yellow as I go. These are dry. And they're closer. I don't want to bring them over her, but I might want to have them be more noticeable. Now, what makes this work is you don't, you want to make patterns. Remember that you want to be an agent of chaos? Be an agent of chaos, my friend. Be an agent of chaos. And when you're an agent of chaos, you have to make sure that what you're doing doesn't create an unintentional pattern that you can't overcome. Chaos seeds. Chaos seeds. Did you heat my coffee, my dev? You're amazing. I don't know why I've been calling John my dev lately. It's been a really strange thing going on. But I'm just going to lean into it because it's how I've been feeling lately. So now we have this nice sort of very muted fall. And there is some lining because the leaves get redder and more yellow as they come into the light. And they're deeper and darker. So there's contrast. There's value. We've got some drama here for her to be in. And so that makes her much more dramatic. And I love that about this. Now, this is the step I'm going to sip my coffee. If there's a question, I'll take it. We're going to come back and start drawing her. And then we're going to be, when we paint her, we'll be done. She's the, well, I guess we're going to put a couple like loose leaves flying around because it's fall, but we're yeah. pretty much, yeah, we're stuck. Yeah. yeah. I probably could have done them together, but they had slightly different lighting and different colors. So I wanted to break them up into steps. And again, I know many of you use that timestamp marker on YouTube to save your place. And um, it's really useful. I wish Facebook had the timestamping because we do timestamp and chapter book them. And then eventually there's a mini book. And in the mini book, um, these come out 7 to 14 days later. Um, they have those timestamps. So you can take the mini book and find your spot again really easily. Do we have any questions? Why I sip my coffee? Where I start playing her? I did that one already. <laughs> it's okay. I can find another one. <laughs> I was just saying, <sighs> sometimes you guys are like, oh, no, you've answered all my questions. So we're going to talk a little bit about skin tones here. Um, and, and in all actuality, I think there's very little for us to do because she's in a very dark lighting. So her, her skin tones are going to be very muted and, and darker. Um, I have videos on how to paint different skin tones. So if you want to change that up again, that's perfectly fine. I do suggest you paint her with me once my way. And then if you're going to paint her again, 
and um, change her substantively in hair color or skin color, um, you'll have at least practice with me on this one. And then by all means, change up. I highly recommend it. I think be as creative as you want to be. Always, always, always. Mm, this is really good coffee. I know I need to move on, but this is really good coffee. I'm going to miss my thing. I may have to put out, yes, I am on a wet palette, but sometimes I still have to put out more white. The white tends to, uh, I've got hair in here. Um, the white, not a brush hair, my hair. Uh, the white tends to dry out very quickly sometimes, and it's the titanium white, and I may sometimes have to put more out. One of the things that you can do to mitigate that, and I wish I had done with my students, so I'll tell you, is use golden open white instead of regular titanium white because it has the slow drying agent in it, and therefore the white doesn't dry out on you so fast. And you always have it in there, which is great. All right, I've got my detail brush here, and I've got her here. I've got my nice little reference, and we're going to paint her in. Now, much like everything else, we want to put in our dark values and block in first and kind of get our shapes and understand where objects are, and then we come back with highlights and deep shadows to create details. That's what we're going to be working through. I'm going to be doing most of this with... Uh, you know, my angle brush, my detail brush, and his pointed brush. But at the end, I may do some specialty brushes to try to get the dress to look as uh, crepey and drapey as possible. So I might use uh, what's called a grass comb um, just to just to get that. I, I've, a bunch of different people make these. Uh, when Princeton makes it, they call it a grainer, and you can find these at most art and craft stores. And I recommend that you have one in the box. They're just good to have around. If you can't get one, get one of these filberts and take scissors and just trim it up. It does void the warranty on your brush, though, just so you know. It will absolutely void the warranty. So I'm going to take my, well, not there. I'm going to take my brown right here and a little of my red. I'm going to just try to find a spot to work a little on skin tone, right? And I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna. So I've got kind of some red and yellow and brown. That's kind of the beginning, right? And I'm going to begin, begin to paint in parts of my figure. Her arms, think about, you know, the shape of an arm. Where do you have muscles? How do those muscles flow? Right? Like a forearm, we know that that kind of bows out and tapers at a wrist, don't we? That's something that we know. Right, and we know that her hand is going to be kind of coming back, and I may have to switch into, you know, a small. I will not do her fingers at this point. I'm going to do just general positioning of objects. Right, so if I know that we've got a thumb here and I've got to fill in a hand, I'm going to do the beginning of the shape of the hand, but not the whole hand. Right, because that's where it can get pear shaped on me. So I just want enough to be aware of where I'm going. Her face is going to have many, many, many more highlights on it, but right now I'm going to just start with this color, pull that down into the neck, and I'm going to make sure everywhere her skin could be exposed, I've got this to start. All right? Again, we have this back here. I know I'm going to be draping blue over it, but let's start with this base color. Tapered at the wrist and kind of thickens at the elbow, doesn't it? Back into my detail because, you know, I want some of the hand. I don't need all of the hand. I just want some of the hand. So I'm going to come here from the bend in the wrist. I'm going to put in the paddle, right, which is the part of the hand that kind of looks like a paddle. That's what we're always doing is putting in our paddle. You just want to give somebody enough thumb and enough everything to, you know, be okay. It is, we're not trying to paint in every detail. If we paint in every detail of her face, we'll lose her face. We want to paint the highlights. 
and the shadows. We don't want to paint in every single solitary detail. Her dress is a crazy color, and I'm sort of excited to figure out how to how to mix this color um, because it feels like it's got a weird turquoise bent to it. It's very strange. So I'm going to definitely be looking for this unusual color. I'm going to actually start out maybe with a little green and ultramarine. Again, guys, this is just coat one. I will blow these brush strokes back a little bit initially. I This is not me finding the um, folds of the dress by any means. Right. And then this one is going to come down just a little bit more and fold back in. And we're just getting a beginning here. We have transparent sleeves to put on. We have chiffon to blow back. We have fingers to add. There's stuff to do. We have busy, busy stuff to do. But you have to begin by just putting in some base value. And I might go ahead and loop some of these strokes around as you see me doing. It's just because the dress does loop a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too involved back here because I need to have a lot of room to do transparent fabric. So I'm going to stay pretty much here with the heavier blue and leave this to paint lightly later. Believe it or not, we're going to start her hair with some black and brown, mostly black. It's going to be dark, 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 and then it's going to be highlights. That's how we're going to get the hair, how we're going to get the like, light curl in the hair. We need to have that beginning. She is having the best fall. She is doing okay in spite of all the craziness in her life. She's above it and beyond it. It can't touch her. Right? She's like, you are but the wind in my hair. Problems and troubles. I do not feel you. So there we go. We've got her hair in there now. You know, and we could blow it everywhere, but I actually kind of liked it how it was. I may come in and, you know, add a little shadow. You can also shade your skin tone with a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, believe it or not. I may come here and come underneath her neck with that ultramarine blue into her skin tone. Maybe a little bit under the arm here. Just a smidge. It's not a huge amount, guys. Just a little under the jaw. A little under the jaw. All right. Let's call this a step, and we're going to come back and start adding those highlights and details that suddenly pull a girl out of the thing. But if you can get the flow and gesture of her, you're going to be doing really, really good. All right? You guys are doing great. Take a deep breath. If you're painting a figure for the first time, give yourself a break. Seriously. It takes a minute to do this. If this is your first time, just don't let it be your last time. That's your goal. That's your mission. If this is your very first figure, right, just don't let it be. If it's your first time, don't let it be your last time. That's all you've got to do because it takes a minute to learn to do this. You will learn it. I like I seriously learned a new thing that I could sit there and freehand almost exactly yeah. on that. On, it was just crazy. I was like, it's what? true. You were awesome. I was. I was very awesome. But I'm still learning new things. You're still learning new things. That's OK. I'm going to dry this because everything needs to be able to stick on the top. There it is, and I will say thank you to everybody who sent all the stars and all the support over here on Facebook. This is just amazing. I looked over on Facebook and was like, whoa, it's a star fall. Thank you, guys. That really helps. It helps to support all the sparkly disco balls and upgrade 
upgraded lights and all the parties. He keeps the light on, the electricity covered. And if you'd like to know more about all that kind of stuff, you can check out theartsherpa.com forward slash patron and find out that info. To that end, Barbara Huber says, I'm not a patron yet. I love that she says yet. And remember, you can page, it is patroning us to like the video, to leave a comment, to share. That's a type of patronage. Um, so it's great when you guys join the patronage. Uh, but she said, I'm not a patron yet. I would call it healing. She looks like she's letting the sun in and the wind blow away her pain and sadness. And uh, I've got another one I thought was just really fun. Um, written, Bina Rao says, if I, I hope I said that correctly. Uh, thank you so much. Simon. My painting has improved leaps and bounds. I can paint a bit, but my confidence grew. So that's your painting, right? There's your confidence in what you can do and your skills. And you got to get those two things aligned together, don't you? Because you can get a bunch of skills, but if you have no faith in them, it's really hard to get them to come into harmony. So you got to get the confidence. And I love whenever you guys say, I feel better, more confident in my art. That's when the big stuff starts to happen. That's when the magic starts raining down. All right. We've got to add some highlights and some just fun stuff to her. I am going to get into maybe a small brush because I want to have some control over what is happening. And I will definitely add a little uh, blending medium to everything because I don't want it to dry on me too fast. And I'm bringing over a little white and I'm adding a little bit of that glaze to it so it slows down and it's drying time and I grab just a smidge smidge of my skin tone my base skin tone that's my darkest skin tone and i'm gonna come up to her face and the top of her cheek definitely even along her nose right we've got a little bit of a highlight even though the hair is going to cover that we definitely do and then we have a little bit you know maybe right here above the jawline get into my base skin tone it's a little bit darker this time and I'll show those two and then interestingly enough and this is going to be hard for me but I'm going to get into my detail brush it's going to be about mm, I need to be able to see it I'm going to pull it close to me you get yours close to you we're going to put a dot under the nose and oh man it can go so weird so let's be careful But we have our background color, do we? So we're not afraid. And I'm going to put a little lash out. Yeah. Now, this is going to be peeking out from the hair. So the, it's going to really work for me. I'm going to get into my light color. And I have to just touch these. It's really hard to get the light touch. You just touch it and you just... Uh, my eyes today are so bad, John. Mm. I was saying that this morning. Yeah. My eyes were just not loving life this morning. I've had a kind of a, not, not, not as bad as some, but I had a bit of a stressful week. And so when I found that when, my, when I'm stressed, sometimes what happens is, is that um, it impacts my vision, guys. Okay, I'm just making sure that we have light on her face, right? Light on the top of her eye. Get that cheekbone there, right? We don't have to have her whole face. We do not have to have her whole face. And if you want to kind of lighten her skin tone, but not have to, you know, change the shading, you can always glaze a bit. And look what happens. She still stays in, in her values, but... I can come in and so the transparency, the glaze can really help me delicately manage features. If I need to clean anything up, what do I do? I come back to the sky color. Which luckily was pretty simple. If I just want to make sure that everything is okay, I can tap that in. Look at how I'm doing. Cleaning her right up. Wow. It's amazing how it works. So if you're having trouble seeing it, what it is is that there's a lash line here. There's a little shadow under the eye. There's a little just hair of a shadow under the nose, a bit of a shading on the cheek. There's a little highlight on the lip and a shadow under her chin. That's what you're fighting for. 
Wow. I'm That's gonna add amazing. a little highlight to where her neck is. Right? We want that. And then somewhat highlighted on the shoulder. Might add a little yellow into it on that part of the skin tone. So it's a little highlighted on the shoulder. And we're adding a bit of highlight to the front of the arm. You see, you guys gather that? Yeah. Let's bring it into the wrist, up the thumb. Now I need to trim her arm back at the dress. So what do I do? I'm over here with my dress color. I'm not stressed about it. Because that's how you do it. That's how you erase it. The dress is your friend in that way. I'm sorry I couldn't do her 16 by 20, but man, my shoulder. Oh, yeah, no. Let's, speaking of shoulders, let's add a highlight to the shoulder there. A little highlight right there, right? We know that we've got uh, a bunch of the blue blowing there, so we don't have to be that particular about that. I will not do the fingers until the dress is done. The fingers are not happening until the dress is done. I'm going to add a highlight above her elbow hmm. and definitely at the top of her hand. Right. So there's there is shadow, but you know it's at the top. We know that we've got the dress coming here, and we've got some feet. Feet, oh my gosh, guys, I get it. I know feet are so scary, right? The foot, feet are so scary. I'll use my darker color. I think my dark skin tone that I mixed up, adding some blending medium there, so it doesn't dry out on me. Okay, so this first little bit of her uh dress is where the foot is hmm do i need white what do i need to see it here all right so we're going to get a little heel out i just want to be able to see what i'm sketching okay and then there's the arc of the foot mm -hmm. right so we have a heel and an arc of the foot and then the foot is on the full ball of the foot that's what's holding her up. I'm going to bring the big toe forward and kind of bring these in at an angle. That's how you're going to get that in perspective. Can be challenging. And again, if it's your first first time just drawing a foot, yeah. Um, be easy with yourself. It's your first time drawing a foot. You can't be mad at yourself for having to learn how to draw a foot. All right, I'm going to make some stone color because I don't want the dress this uh, here. I'm just using the grass comb so it's a kind of makes sense under her. It's a rough brush. I could use a different rough brush. It wouldn't really matter. I just want to make sure that I've got some. Okay. Now here Right, we have just a toe. All the foot's right there. It's a little bit back from this one. Just the toe lands there, and the front of the foot. It's it's like a partially exposed foot. Rather charming. Follow the foot, and then the toes are in a bit of perspective. So you really only see the big one and just some of that foot out. And so that's how we get those tiny little adorable feeties out of her dress. Ah. That said, let's get our dark skin tone. That's the one where we added uh, altering blue. Watch for that drop. Man, that drop got me, didn't it? Yeah, it can. It can. I'm going to come here then where the drop didn't get me. into the regular skin tone yeah there we go we got it we got it a little bit of yellow 
You know what it is. Put your glazing medium if you need it. You just paint these little elements in, just build them up. You plan them out, you build them up. And if you're not ready, you use the traceable. You still get to do the painting and it's not cheating. Mm -hmm. You don't really see the foot in without the highlights and the um, shadows very well. That's what, that's what really makes it. And I'll tell you what, and this is definitely something uh, I've had to test my convictions and am constantly testing my convictions on, mm -hmm. is that, you know, you need a little shadow to see the light. Oh, yeah. You know, you need some people to sometimes be awful to really appreciate the people that are great. You need to, there's just a little sadness to taste the sweet. <laughs> so sometimes, unfortunately, we need both. I'm trying to find a little highlight value. And I'm going to bring that kind of across the toes here. And a little bit the front of the foot. The side of the foot is really got to be um, not that bright. A lot of it's kind of in shadow, right? Mm -hmm. We can't do that bright of a skin tone there. A little bit brighter than I want, maybe. So I'll just tap it back a bit. It's light, but it's not that bright. Foot, the challenge of the foot. You mm -hmm. feel challenged? You're not alone. We're all challenged by the foot. A little bit lighter skin tone maybe here. You know, the ball of the foot. Bit on where the toe is touching, just kind of comes up. I'm going to get a little black and blue because I need some very dark shadows to help me really define these. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Adding some dark shadows to help me find them. Sometimes you do, you just need those shadows. Help you find where the feet are. Bringing that one a little forward, right? Yeah. Adding a little red to the feet down here. You can glaze it. As long as you can do it light, you'll be really, really okay. And yeah, I'll fight for the feet more than anything <laughs> on the painting, for sure. So see me and know that it's okay. The feet looking good. Yeah. And if you want to, like, put dress all down off of the feet, like, if you fight this for a while and you're like, nope, it's going to be a dress, that's okay. That is a legit decision. But I wanted to fight the feet, so I fought the feet. 
Let's call this a step because we really were to get here. And we'll come back and kind of define a little more on her. I can't wait to get her dress all billowy, billowy, billowy. She's going to be so pretty. So sometimes things are difficult because the skills are escaping you. Sometimes things are difficult because they're just plain difficult. They're small. They're in a weird angle. The paint isn't thin enough. The canvas is rough. So try to be aware of when it's, hey, I got to work on these skills a little bit, or when it's like, yeah, it's just tough paint today. It's, or it's a, it's a tough small face, and that's just a little harder. Be realistic and reasonable with yourself. It's important. Um, Shannon Norton says, Cinnamon, John, you're so wonderful. Cinnamon, you've taught me so much. Thank you. Well, you are so welcome. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to continue on with my tiny brush because it's giving me a sense of control. I'm going to bring some of my brown over to my black, and I may even bring a little yellow over to my brown. Maybe I want to make it orange because orange is so nice. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. So let's begin by second coating her head. That's just bringing the black down, really finding the shape of everything, right? We find the shape of everything. Nice, deep, and it gets a little more brown as it comes down her hair. Just a little more brown as it comes down her hair. And then I'm going to get into this wonderful orange. And I'm going to begin to add some highlights that are blowing. Oh, that's too orange. That'll happen. You'll be like, oh, it's too orange. We're going to begin to blow some hair back. Now here on the outside, it might be quite light because, well, It just would be. I'm going to pull some brown into her hair. Down here at the ends, just blend that back up. I want to make sure that, you know, her hair looks. As blowing as it is, because it is blowing. We're going to come back in a second and uh, we're going to let that dry for a little bit, and we're going to start thinking about this amazing dress, right? To do the amazing dress, I'm definitely going to want more glazing medium, and maybe I'll put that here over by where the blue... Oh, that's too much glazing medium. It squeezed too hard. Don't use that much. What am I using? I'm using this golden product. You can see it in both of its editions. Sometimes you'll find it in either label. Um, that's too much. Don't put out that much. That's far too much. You don't, you don't need that amount. But I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my, um, I'm going to use my Filbert Grainer by Princeton. And I'm going to come here and kind of mix these together. It's all right if a little white gets into it. And I do want it to be more ultramarine blue and green. I think that's a good place to get into the color. I probably also could get a little burnt sienna into it to find that color. I'm going to use a little of my glaze. A little of my glaze. And I'm going to begin to pull back some transparent. Folds of fabric. You guys see these? So I have paint on here, but I want it to be see-through. 
There we go, just a little bit. I'm gonna curl the brush strokes around and it's just these edge bits here. There's this sort of uh, chiffon space here and I don't want to lose that in the dress. And so this is how I'm getting that, all right? This is how I'm pulling that off. All right, this is where we are. I'm gonna come back here. Getting a little white and blue involved. And what you see me doing is just trying to find the load of my brush and the transparency in the work. If I need a little more white, I'll get a little more white. No, well, I was doing her hair, but I, ha I had to dry it. And you, we weren't here to dry it, so I moved on to the dress. No, no, it's okay. We're good. Kids and I have been great. <laughs> Have we kids? We've been great. Okay. There. So adding a little more white into it and kind of blending it in. But you can see how we're not losing such a nice transparency, is it? Such beautiful transparency. And that's about, you know, making sure that you're, you know, perhaps pulling things through. Look at that. That's got just a little white in that color. And I'm still doing the glazing medium. If you don't have the glazing medium, you'll have to do this with water and you'll have to really wait for the painting to dry for a while because binding will take much longer if there's a lot of water in the paint. We used to think it didn't bind at all, but Golden did a study and if you're using a professional paint, it may actually bind. If you're using a uh, student paint, it may never bind. It's really about what you've got in your, in your brush kit and in your paint box. You can see we are adding shadows. Like if I want to put depth into a fabric or talk about a fold, I can come in with a shadow. If I want to layer it, it's not that hard, is it? Mm. And I can even come in with a little glaze over my fit a little bit. And let's even do some of this lightness some light into it but let's do some of this lightness on the blowback see how we're doing i do Isn't that nice that really creates a sense of wonder in the dress doesn't have to be so hard doesn't have to be can be if you'd like it to be it can be so hard if you really really like it to be that's super fine but if say, you would rather it not be thank you to jackie be. out there she really, she said she really enjoys watching our showing and learning from us and just a very generous patron support. So thank you. Thank you so much. All the, all the patrons out there, we really appreciate it. All right. See how we're getting? Are you guys just loving the lightness and airiness in her dress? Mm. Just so wonderful. Now, she's got quite a bit of that uh, up on her sleeve, and this is going to be important to get. So I'm going to bring this over here. I want just a tint or tone. I don't want much yet. Little little sleeve there, isn't it? Yeah. And let's get a little white into this. This sleeve kind of comes almost down to above her arm. Filbert Grainer glazing medium. Chiffon is no problem. If you're ever wondering how on earth I even do a transparent fabric, what? This. You see some of the skin through the fabric and you use tools that help you find uh, its place. Now I am going to get a little of my detail brush involved and I'll come back here and I need to clean up her dress or cleaning up as needed. It is the ultramarine blue, a little phthalo green and where necessary 
a little burnt sienna. Put a little white into this and highlight the strap up at the top. Why wouldn't you? You would. You would absolutely come here and give a little highlight to her front there. Now, right here, I'm going to go ahead and get the white from here. That's fine. I need to make sure that we've got some lightness happening here. Very bright light. I'm just doing a rough little brush stroke coming back to show the light on the dress. Just at this hip. So we gave it a little bit more there, didn't we? We were like, hmm, perhaps a little more. A little more shadow at the waist and under the bust, which really helps define shape. A little more shadow here at the back, which really helps define shape. Oh. Hopefully we have some skin tone left. Uh, looks like we've got to get into it again, which is not my favorite, but you know, that's why you learn to mix the stuff. And your skin tone. We'll roll out. I've got my detail brush. Now. Yeah. It's hard, and that's okay. It's supposed to be hard, but we don't mind. Mm. We're all right with that. We shade the top, mm. right? Top of the fingers. So Virginia says Highlight the top of the fingers. Sorry, what? Virginia said something interesting here. Mm. Says, you spend a lot of time on the details. That's what makes your painting so superior and look so professional. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I appreciate that because, you know, I love doing the one hoots. I like doing the entry stuff where everybody gets a chance to start out. But it is nice every once in a while. Come in and spend a little detail time. Just a little bit on those delicate fingers coming back, right? So what you basically have is you'll have a little highlight at the top of the fingers and where they bend at the knuckles, they'll get a little darker. Ah. Right? If you need to bring your ultramarine into the mix to get a dark shadow, you can. Get in there, get that dark shadow. Don't be, don't be sorry for it. You got to do it, you got to do it. going to add a little bit of that shadow to the tips there so that they feel like they've got a little lightness and darkness to them. It's a trip, I know. While I'm here, and I know that my brush is not dripped, I'm going to come in and just add another little pop of highlight to the top lid that is showing out on her. Oh, wow. Right? That's just going to help a bit. Just helps a bit when we want that help. Mm -hmm. oh, back while we've got the skin tone, we should finish out the hand that we've got to have. A little bit in the white. A 
a little bit here because the thumb, right? And the hand would have a bit of highlight to them. The outer finger quite a lot. So it comes out and a bit over. The rest of the hand is tucked behind and coming out this way. It's hard. I really don't know what to say about it except it's a journey and you've got to kind of find your way through. I'm tipping my canvas up so that I have a better view of it. Yep. Right? And that's important because if I want to capture the the unusual backward positioning of her hands, I'm going to need to do that. I added a little highlight to her thumb, and then I'll definitely highlight to there. We're going to need a little highlight at the top of the hand to that wrist bone. I may need to come back with my dress color, but remember how we said we erase with our paint when we have the color already there saved? Mm -hmm. so if I want to come right here, not with that drop though. The drop is not my friend. Huh. Okay, there we go. I've got to trim this finger down. Has to be quite delicate or it does not work. Little bit. I might get a little more red into it so everything's a little pinker it's hands see if it's dry enough for me to play with right now all right so i'm not feeling it and when i'm not feeling it what am i going to do do it over mm -hmm. take the background Feature, not a fault. I can come back. I'm really happy with my thumb, though, so win. <laughs> and it's just improve the dress. Let's just improve the dress. It'll just improve the dress for a minute. We're going to let it have a little rest, right? A little rest, and we're going to put some, perhaps with the, you know, the little, this is, oh, I switched to the, Grass comb and I'm going to stay on the grainer. But it's, you know, you get the basic gist. Add some uh, deep shadows to some of the, some of the dress where maybe the fabric is thicker and folds need to be defined. That's always a good thing to do. Okay, since this is being a whole thing, let's go back into the hair. Okay. Which is, if you remember, uh, our kind of gold orange color. With some cad red, some cad yellow, and burnt sienna in there. And we're catching the highlights of her hair. Now we're getting some highlights on her hair? Mm-hmm. That's okay. We are okay with that. All right, let's maybe curl some things and we curl the edges of her hair a bit. So that we can see her hair and she does have like that nice little ombre and you can always come back with a little burnt sienna anywhere you want and mm -hmm. add a little 
Judge. Judge it up. Now all we have left to fight is this hand. <gasps> I'm going to dry it and okay. I'm going to start again and we're going to get it, guys. Okay. And then we're going to have got it. Oh, it's getting so close. Looking so good. So nice to see everybody. And man, thank you guys all for all the support and the stars. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It helps doing these bigger lessons to have that support. I really appreciate it. It helps to have the support of you guys coming to the shows. So it means a lot to me. All right. We're going to come here. You know, I've got a knuckle here. All right. little highlight right there. I'm just trying to, to capture and exaggerate the light that we're seeing so that when I paint these little features, she doesn't look like she has a crab hand. This is what we battle. The crab hand today. Crab hand, crab hand. Happy, happy crab hand. There we go. A little bit better. And her other fingers are dark and light. They have like pretty dark shadow underneath, but then a highlight. So it's probably best that I come in with the shadow first. Right. And then we pick them out as we go. I'm going to get into my black right now. And come under. And definitely kind of exaggerate some of that shadow in there. And under that hand, a bit. You know what I'm doing? Yeah. And exaggerate it just a bit so that we can see its form and it works. Crystal says she absolutely loves and appreciates you don't hide or even cover frustration when it's not going the way you like it. It teaches us how it happens and the graceful way you move around it is brilliant. I mean, if you're going to paint, stuff is going to happen, right? <laughs> it's going to it's do It's coming. Uh, so I am very glad to share that with you. I would be, I get irked when I see people edit out their, um, I, one of the things that makes me craziest on any platform is something called a tutorial that's a speed paint. Mm -hmm. I know it searches in the term and uh, they're just trying to feed themselves, but it's not, you know what, for me it is, but I mean, you're not seeing the process really. If you cut out, if you do blend cuts and you do all that, you haven't really shown anybody the proce process. But, uh, you know. Not only. Do what you can do, right? I'm going to make sure there's no drops on this by any means. Because I can't take any. And we're going to come here and add. A bit of a light and a bit of a light and a bit of a light to the little free fingers that are bent. The reason it's just a bit of a light is, man, you wouldn't, they're not very lit. They're, they're in shadow, right? Maybe a little bit of red and purple in the shadow and like the, this finger here to the knuckle could be in shade and the thumb to the knuckle could be in shade. Mm. And that gives her hand just a little bit of proper positioning. And then there's this weird shadow back here on the other knuckle. Man, it is just a challenge to get, but if I can, it'll help her hand. So we're just trying to make sure 
that what's in her hand that should be shaded is shaded and what's in her hand that should be in light is in light. And there, and we get that there. How do you guys like this painting? Is this mm -hmm. wild or what? Yeah, this is really, they're really enjoying it for sure. All right. So I'm going to. Mm, I think I also need to glaze or lighten her arm a bit. So what I'm going to do is I've got my skin tone, right? And I'm going to add a little white to it and get the glazing. I don't want it to be a pure color because I want to just make a subtle change, not a profound change. You see that right there? Yeah. It's a subtle change, not an overwhelming change. There we go. A little bit of finishing work on the hair, though. Oh, my goodness. Do some finishing work on the hair. I'm going to take a little white and yellow from that mix over there. Ooh. That hair is really coming together. She's got that fair of faucet hair. Yeah, it's blowing back. That 80s wind machine. There we go. We just want to really see it. Okay. And you can, you know, I'm not going to put the flower in here. Let's come back and we're going to add some finishing touches that will help this feel uh, more weighted and her to feel more uh, present into the thing and some leaves in front. So it'll be the last step. She is a big project. Whenever I say three hoot, what I generally mean is we're going to be here a second and there's going to be a few layers and there might be an area that you got to work at. It's okay to work at something. It's okay to let it dry and take a look at it and give it a go. You learn by trying. You don't learn by doing. Well, you do learn by doing and that you paint and painting teaches you how to paint. But the getting new skills, that's a, that's a doing activity. You've got to do to get them. First thing, let's get a little white and let's get a little of our glazing medium. I don't mind if it picks up some of the uh, blue because it's supposed to be, uh, you know, a highlight in that area. And I want to make sure that we've got some, some very strong, noticeable highlights. Right? When we're trying to talk about make these little S strokes in there to catch the edge of the fabric. Use strong lights really help give the dress some movement. Little touches are a big thing. I'm still using. Uh, oh, I got to get to my grainer. This is the shirt. This is the grass comb in silver brush, and this is the filbert grainer um, from Princeton, and they're both good. I'm gonna take a little black and blue and some glazing medium. More glazing medium, and I'm going to make a shadow under her. One of the number one things that you can improve as a new artist is to remember that objects cast shadows. And we need them. We need the light and the shadow to see our objects as solid and real in the space. The glazing medium really helps me. Blend that out, but it needs to be visibly there. We need to know it's there. She is weighted. She is real, to us at least, on our canvas, in our world. We see her as a substantive whole being. I'm going to take a little black. I'm going to go under the toe, and I'm going to step back just right under her foot. Do you feel her ground? Yes, she is almost in flight, but still gravity affects her in it. Without those little anchor shadows, it doesn't. 
I do think that there was some genius about having a few like little leaves kind of going through. So I'm going to take a little of my orange and red, and it's okay if some brown gets into it. Because that just also gives us wind, doesn't it? What gives us wind? This gives us wind. Bigger and small marks. There we go. Now she has a little bit of wind. And oh my gosh, I love that. At this stage, you just come in and anything that needs a little more anchor. And add a little crack to the stone. Always add a little crack to the stone, can't you? Little details that make a huge difference. Yeah, it does. Little details. Little details that make a difference. Anchor anything you want. Maybe a little more right there. Oh, I love it. Let's sign it. Wow, that came together. Yeah. Just, just, just need a little bit. Just, just a, little a little bit to get there. Um, I'll come here and get this light color, and I'll make sure there's no drops over here. Boy, I wanted to drop that corner all day today. I hope you guys love this. Mm -hmm. But more than loving it, I hope you guys do it. You guys try it for yourselves. Um, seven to 14 days from now, I do believe there will be a step-by-step -step written mini book of this. And I wanted to ask you something, John. Hmm. Could we do a print of this? Yeah. We could? Yeah. No, so totally if, problem. if you guys think that we should do a print of this, uh, definitely thumb up the video. And if you leave a comment... Um, anyone in, I'm sorry again, it's the contiguous United States right now, or, or is this one global? Can we do I can go. Well, we can do this one global. Well, if you accept shipping, can we? I, so here's the thing is that there's, print. it's a print. It's, it's hard. I, what I want to do is, is that, um, we will do our best. If you are in a strange part of the world, you have to be able to get mail and not be shut down for you. COVID. There's or, like, so provided we can get it to you and you're patient, we're going to get it to you. Leave a comment after the show with the hashtag Art Sherpa or the Art Sherpa in it. I'll make sure I put these rules up there. Uh, uh, one of you will get a signed print of this mm -hmm. as a giveaway to say thank you for hanging in. But I'll only people who are here at the end are going to even know it's a giveaway. So you guys know you're special, right? So if you'd like a, a what's super limited edition, right? Yeah. Because I was like, sign print and it will be a full thing. And um, you've got to be uh, over 18 and be able to receive mail. And it's got to be on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook, hop over to YouTube and that's where you would leave the comment. And the reason that is, is because the random, random comment picker works best there. Um, and I just want to make sure it's fair. Hashtag Art Sherpa or the Art Sherpa and we'll close it. Um, same as the other two. Um, uh, it will be actually the, the following Saturday. I'll put the date on there, close like at 8 in the morning, and then we'll announce the winner on that Saturday's show. Hmm. You want to know if you won the signed print from this print single. <laughs> A one, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you, babe. I really appreciate that. Good luck for you guys. If you would like that, that's a cool thing. Um, and, you know, have fun. Try to make your own. You can do it. You can do better than you think. Don't stress on the little stuff. Just... Give yourself a little moment and try, and you'll you'll surprise yourself. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you and Anisal really soon. Bye-bye.